Hey y'all, welcome back. So this week is my book review week. I've actually been reading my books a little faster than I, w I originally planned. And so I might end up doing like two, maybe three book reviews next month. Be forewarned. I might spread them out so it's like every other week, but just a heads up. Anyways, um, sorry, my two-year-old has decided that she's going to come in and try to help me out randomly. Um, but, so, my point is, is I read The Miracle of Forgiveness this month, and it, I'm kind of torn. It was good. It was good. Don't get me wrong. But, I don't like the fact that he lumps some sins together. Let's just break this down real quickly. So, I don't like it because I, I feel like being that it is talking about forgiveness, it should have been more about forgiveness. There are three different sections in the book. There is the sin part where he explains what sins are and when you should confess them. Actually, he explains when you should confess them to an ecclesiastical leader. Um, and then he talks about the repentance process. And then he talks about forgiveness itself. And seeing that it's called the miracle of forgiveness, I understand why he did all three of them. But to me, I would have spent more time on the actual forgiveness and how to apply forgiveness into our lives better and more fully. But that's just me. I'm also not an author, so you're welcome. Um, but with this book, I would also keep in mind the fact that it was written, what, back in like 1980? First printing was in 1969. So, I mean, it was a long time ago. A long time ago. So don't take it as complete truth. Not complete truth. That's not okay to say. But you know what I'm saying? Like, don't take it as like hard facts because things have changed over the years. Life is different now. Life isn't the same as it was back in the 1960s. Um, and so keep that in mind also. Um, also, another thing to keep in mind is the fact that um, he was actually interviewed after writing this book and he says that it came off a lot harder than he anticipated. So he actually didn't really want to be an author in the first place. He didn't want to write the book. He didn't want to write anything. Um, and then he did and he's like, I really felt inspired to do it. So he felt inspired to write. It wasn't that he just wanted to write and so he did. It was that he felt inspired and put it out there. Um, but it did come off a lot harder than he anticipated and he was hoping for years that they would stop reading the book. So he's actually kind of, I bet he's kind of grateful right now. I know his family, when they heard that uh, they weren't going to be printing the book anymore, um, they were actually kind of grateful because they do remember having conversations with him about the fact that he wished that it hadn't been printed or that he wished that they would stop reading it or something to that effect. Um, look it up. You can see what he says. There's a couple of interviews where they talk to his son. Um, and I think one of them actually quotes him particularly, or not particularly, him uh, specifically, that's what I was looking for, him specifically. Um, but let's go into what I like. So um, let's, I already talked about what I don't like. I don't like the fact that it's broken up at three different play, uh, stages, or not stages, three different sections. Um, only because, like I said, it's talking about forgiveness. And so I was hoping more for how to forgive, um, what to feel when you forgive, the steps to forgiving, um, and stuff like that, just because I feel like that would have been more beneficial for me. Um, don't get me wrong, I know how to forgive. I'm not completely slow, but um, there are some things that's just kind of like a natural man thing where I just kind of have to get over myself, and I would love to have like little pointers on that, which I do feel like he got to, but I kind of wish that he had gotten into more detail to, um, and I think that if the book had been more about forgiveness instead of about repentance and sins entirely, or entirely, sins and repentance in their entirety as well, then I feel like that would have been more applicable to the title especially. So false advertising is what I say on that one. Um, that's a joke. I'm just saying. I just wish I had talked more about actual forgiveness. Um, but the forgiveness part is actually my favorite part of the book. I, I love, love, love the different things that he says and how he explains how we should forgive and why we should forgive and I love how he brings the scriptures into it and he talks about how the scriptures are teaching us how to forgive and how God is teaching us how to forgive. Um, if you don't believe in God, that's cool. Just read it and think of the universe instead. Either way, I love the way he talks about forgiveness. I love the way he makes it applicable to me and I love the way he um, makes it so that it feels like it's something I can do easily and that I can do my part, especially with the forgiveness things that I feel are hard to make up for or the forgiveness things that are or the 
types of forgiveness that I have to make restitution for, but that restitution could take years. Like, I know I've offended people, and that's not going to be an overnight, I'm sorry, you're going to have to forgive me kind of thing. It's going to be a, a daily, I have to show that I am trustworthy and that I meant my forgive my apology whenever I gave it to you kind of thing. Um, and I have to make restitution for that every single day, just like they have to make restitution for it. Because that's something, it was a two-way street, my friend. When we're offended, usually the other person's offended as well. That's part of the book that, uh, the next book that I'm reading, it talks about the fact that um, we usually offend others because of the fact that we're offended ourselves. We're trying to hurt somebody else because we are hurt. Um, and so when you come at it like that and when you realize that, then that makes it more like, okay, I need to forgive just like I need to be forgiven. And when you think about how God or the universe or whatever will, will forgive in the long run, then wouldn't you want to put that good karma out there? Wouldn't you want to make up for it? Wouldn't you want to be a better person? Wouldn't you want to strive for more? That's what I thought of by the end of the book. I thought of how how amazing it is and what a peaceful, happy feeling it can bring into our lives when we choose to forgive and forget and let go. Because when we forget, I'm not saying that you should forget the whole thing ever happened, although in a way I am. I am saying, no, I'm not saying that you should forget how they made you feel. That's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. I am saying you should forget the incident, but remember how they made you feel so that way you can guard yourself. Because a lot of times I feel that people feel like when they forgive and forget that they're having to let get down their guard and that they have to put themselves back out there to... Um, to be hurt all over again. And that's not what I think he's saying. What I think he's saying is that you should be like God in the sense where you forgive them, you forget about the incident that happened, and then you remember that to try to look at them through God's eyes, and you remember that you have to be guarded yourself. Because God wants you to love yourself just like he wants you to love them. And when you do that, when you guard yourself, you're going to be able to love them more because you're able to set those boundaries and those are healthy boundaries. Those are healthy boundaries that everyone has to respect and everyone has to follow. Um, and some people are going to have more boundaries than others just because of the way that they are with you in your life. And that's okay. It is okay. Um, there's no right or wrong in this one. It's, I honestly feel like forgiveness is so personal and, um, such a, a sweet topic whenever you really think about it, because it's such a, loving and peaceful thing when true forgiveness happens. Now don't get me wrong, I have to constantly forgive myself and others almost on a daily basis because of the fact that I know I say things out of hurt and anger and that hurts somebody else. I have to forgive myself for that just like I have to forgive the other person for retaliating and saying something to me. Um, I do things all the time just like I know other people have done to me um, that I know is going to hurt somebody. Um, or I'm so stuck on what I want that I'm unwilling to look at things from someone else's perspective. And that's hard. I think that's the hardest thing a lot of times, especially when it comes to forgiveness, is that we're all like, oh, well, I don't need to forgive. They need to forgive. And I'm saying we all because it's all of us. It's not just me. It's not just my husband. It's not just our children. It's not just my family. It's not just his family. It's not just there's no just one person for this one. Everyone is very much of the personality and perspective of, it's not my job, it's their job. And that's not okay. And so when we come at it from the perspective of, I want to love this person more. And I want to show them that I value them. And I want to show them that no matter what they do, God still loves them. How can I do that in a way that will help build that trust back with me? Um, and so I think that's the most important thing that you can take away from this book. Um, if you read it, read it all the way, but at the same time, take heart to the ending, especially the last, oh, how many chapters? Um, I believe it's the last, uh, three to six chapters. I want to say it's three chapters. One... 
two, three, four. I was right the first time. It's like six chapters. So the last six chapters is what I would pay attention to the most because that's the most important part where it's talking about the forgiveness itself. And if you have to, and if you want to, and if you feel inspired to go back and reread it, I highly recommend going back and rereading the ending of the last six chapters, especially just because that's the part that's going to bring you the most happiness. And that's the part that's going to bring you the most joy. And so I hope you guys have a good week. And next week, let me know what you want to talk about. Or this week, let me know what you want to talk about. Drop a comment below. Like, share, subscribe. And I hope you guys have a fun, fun, amazing week. Bye.